Gary, hey, that works great. This looks like a pretty good fish, too. These cutthroats really don't make the long runs and jumps like a rainbow, but they're still beautiful fish. A lot of people think they're easy to catch, but that's not always the case, especially today. Get him up here. Boy, that's a pretty colored fish. It's hard to find a, a fish that's colored more beautifully than these Yellowstone cutthroats. I've caught other cutthroats, the Snake River variety, but they don't have all the red on them that these Yellowstone fish have. Well, that is a beautiful fish. It's always a thrill to catch these Yellowstone cutthroats because they're so rare. They just don't happen in every stream. Let's see if we can get him revived here. He's pretty tired. Yeah, I often get concerned when I see people releasing fish, just dropping them back into the river because it's like this fish is doing. It takes a while. There he goes. That emerging caddis pupa, Gary's, is a great pattern. And it was kind of an enjoyable thing for me to fish with him today and see some of his techniques, and they really work. During the hatch, you don't need the full-blown hatch. Matter of fact, usually the best fishing is before the hatch, when they're just starting to become aware of them, because then your fly isn't competing with thousands of naturals. I always like to get there about two, three hours early, fish a dry fly effectively or a pupa, and you'll start to take fish. Yeah, I think just before and then just after the hatch is always better than when you've got a lot of bugs on the water. And yet everybody sits around on the bank waiting for the hatch to actually start. Nice drift, Mike, nice. Just yeah, I think keep we've it going. pretty much covered that water. Keep it going, keep it going. Oh, there he is. That pattern's a tease. They're taking those spent adults and you got that little swim that makes it look like it's struggling. And it can hurry them a little bit out of their rise pattern. Got the net down, oh, you can lead them over. Oh, he didn't like that. No, he says, wait All a right, minute. All right, let's try it again. There are many caddis fly larvae that do not build cases. They're around the rivers, they're on the stream bottoms. Some of them have very bright green color to their body. We call those the green caddis, obviously enough. There's a period in their life cycle just before they enter the state of pupation, before they're gonna close off into a case, that these insects will tend to drift higher on a 24-hour basis, and that's a good time to imitate them. This basic pattern is, again, very, very simple to tie. I use a curved hook. One of the characteristics, one of those positive characteristics that a trout looks for is the bent body of the natural as he's drifting through the water. These are called grub or shrimp hooks. And most of the major hook manufacturers have a model that resembles this one. Materials I'll use, I want a little bit of ribbon. And so I'll tie in a stripped hackle fiber. I'll give you a clue about using quills or hackle, stripped hackle fiber for bodies, whether you're using it as a ribbing or for the entire body. You soak it in some warm water about a half an hour before you start tying, and then it won't split when you wrap it. Use your wonder wax. Now there are many different methods of dubbing. I happen to use a simple one. I never realized it was particularly unique or different, but I don't see too many people doing it this way. I make the thread very tacky with the wax. I chop up my dubbing very fine and I just touch it to it. Now some patterns I like to leave very rough. 
and I won't do anything other than this. Others, I want a smoother body, so I'll go ahead and I'll roll it onto the thread itself. And you can adjust the thickness by how much dubbing you actually touch on the thread. And then you wrap the body and you can figure out that a caddis larva has a roughly tapered body where it'll be thicker up near the head than it will at the back and so you can wrap a little bit more at the head just to give it a small taper. Take your stripped hackle stem, wind it, this gives a little bit of segmentation. Not really all that important, but it does make the fly a little bit more presentable, as if we care. More important, as if the trout care. You know, there's a, two different worlds in fly tying. There are flies that sell, and there are flies that catch fish. I never worry about those that sell because I don't own a tackle shop. I do fish a lot. We call that the presentationist school of fly tying. And that's absolutely to say there's nothing wrong with a very detailed pattern. The little legs coming off the side, each little gill showed along the side. That is a celebration of the fly tying art. I love to look at those patterns. They don't work particularly well in the water, and there's a reason. To look well when you're holding it in your hand, that has to be tied with stiff materials. To look well in the water, to breathe, to flow, to expand, it has to be tied with soft materials. Take a few grouse hackle fibers, tie them underneath the hook as a throat, Clip the stubs, whip finish, and you have your finished pattern. Nothing fancy, nothing hard to do. Now on this fly here, I'll fish it a lot early in the summer, in the spring when the major hatching occurs say something about nymph fishing in general. You're on a vacation, you're out for two weeks, it's the first chance you've had to fish this year. You can use a dry fly. Within a few hours you've picked up the techniques, you've regained the old sharpness, and you're back on the ball. When I fish nymphs, I'll do nothing else. I'll strictly fish nymphs for a couple weeks, and then I start to get that uncanny feeling when I know there's a fish down there, and I know I have a strike, and I'll set the hook. Nymph fishing takes a certain level of concentration, a certain level of intensity, that you can't do it occasionally. You can't do it randomly. The good nymph fishermen that I know, they don't fish anything else. They fish nymphs all the time. Very simple fur pattern. As a matter of fact, the first time we tied it, I was saying it was not anything special. It's sparse, it's simple. But you know, there have been enough times when this fly has saved the day for me when it's caught fish consistently, when other flies were only doing so-so, that I wouldn't want to be without it in my fly box.